This is Ringler Radio, where you get all the latest news and information about settlement solutions, litigation, mediation, and structured financial security from Ringler, the largest and most experienced company of settlement consultants in the United States. Ringler has been helping injured people and their families since 1975. Ringler Radio is made possible in part by American General, Liberty Mutual, MetLife, Mutual of Omaha, New York Life, Pacific Life, and Prudential. Now join Ringler Radio host Larry Cohen. Well, hello and welcome to Ringler Radio, everyone. I'm Larry Cohen, the head of Ringler's Northeast Operations, and we're certainly glad you could join us again today. Well, in April of this year, Ringler Executive Vice President Jim Early will become the next president of the National Structured Settlement Trade Association. NASTA is the voice of the structured settlement profession and the leading advocate for the rights of injured parties. And today on Ringler Radio, we'll talk to Jim about his new role as president of NASTA and how he views his mission in the coming term. Well, also joining us today is the executive director of NASTA, Eric Vaughn. Eric's advocacy on behalf of the injured has been a guiding force at NASTA, and his extensive experience on Capitol Hill, having served in the White House and on National Security Council, has also served him very well. Thanks, both of you, for taking the time to be with us today on Ringler Radio. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to do so. Terrific. Well, Eric, let's begin uh, with you. you. You've you been with NASTA since 2001. Uh, it's quite a few years of experience in the political world down there. Tell us a little bit about your experience on the Hill, and for those in our audience who aren't familiar with it, give us some background on, on NASTA itself. Go ahead. Well, Larry, the, the best thing to, to know about, in starting out with NASA, the, the trade association, um, it's, it's not a unique um, enterprise in that there are about 40,000 organizations similar to us, meaning trade associations or business and professional organizations. We're the, one of the most unique trade associations in Washington, D.C., and that we represent the structured settlement uh, consultants and the provider companies and the lawyers and the associates who, who bring the entire uh, panoply of responses and, and, and opportunities to help settle cases for injured victims uh, on both the defense side and the plaintiff side. So we bring all the parties together around our trade association table. We take all those voices and we bring them together and focus them on Capitol Hill uh, to try to impact new members of Congress and staffers to understand what a structured settlement is, why it is so important to maintain tax code provisions, and, and how it is to, important to look out for the interests, long-term health and economic interests of injured people. And we do that with both houses of Congress, both sides of the aisle, uh, and we do it every single day of the year. Well, it also has a great leader in, your, in yourself. And uh, Jim, you're going to be taking the, the, the reins of NASTA and, and actually taking over from uh, President Len Blonder, who's been a three-term president of the organization, uh, kind of a legendary figure in this industry. Tell us uh, about your mission as the new president-elect of NASTA. What is it, what is it going to look like? Well, I, I think my biggest challenge will be following somebody uh, as as important to our industry as Len Blonder. You know, when they when they make the Mount Rushmore of structured settlements, Len Blonder's face is going to be the one on the left. Uh, but yeah, it, I think, uh, obviously, our mission at NASA is the one I'm going to protect the most, and that's to make sure that the rights of injury victims are protected. Uh, there's nothing more important than protecting those people who have been injured and, more important, providing them the opportunity to structure their settlements so that they have the financial security and certainty that's so important for people who've been uh, injured or disabled. Uh, in keeping with that, obviously, we want to do all we can to make sure we protect those important sections of the tax code that apply to structured settlements, sections 104 and sections 130. Not that we feel as though uh, those are targeted, whatever. We just worry that with sweeping uh, tax reform coming, we have to be very vigilant to make sure that we don't get uh, swept out with something else. And then I think lastly, our uh, uh, a goal more than a mission would be to continue to grow the structured settlement industry, not only in terms of the number of people who uh, have that as their profession, but also to increase the use of structured settlements for the 
uh, for the injured uh, tort victim community. Well, you know, Jim, I've also heard you say that uh, you're looking to expand initiatives to develop new markets with products and services to supplement our role as settlement solutions specialist. And uh, that statement is interesting to me. Uh, what are some of NASTA's initiatives for the new year? What, what's, what do you have in mind? Well, the first one, I think, uh, that it, it applied not so much to a new product and new service, but it's kind of like uh, uh, reverting back to uh, the old way, uh, for lack of a better way to put it. I'd like to see the uh, insurance companies and the self-insured community and the defense community uh, re-engage like they were in the 80s and 90s. Uh, I'm not sure why that has fallen off. Uh, if you talk to 10 structured settlement consultants, you'll get 15 different reasons why that may be the case. But I think one of our primary growth initiatives would be to re-engage the defense community in the process. A third initiative, Larry, is we're looking to work with our life company partners to uh, develop additional products that tie in nicely with structured settlements or perhaps an expansion on some of the available products that we have there. And we're encouraging all of our consultants, uh, companies, to uh, look hard at those uh, uh, other companies that can be good partners with structured settlement uh, consultants, uh, people who can help us with things like lien resolution and things like uh, 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 developing Medicare set-asides, uh, essentially uh, bringing the process, growing the process now that we're some 40 years old, that structured settlement consultants are seen as more than just somebody who comes in and quotes an annuity. And it's somebody that can come in and arrange a settlement and make sure that you're making the best overall use of settlement dollars. You know, another another thing, uh, Eric, is we, we've heard a lot of talk about taking back the structured settlement brand and uh, really providing education for the public on structures. Uh, a lot of times when people hear the word structured settlement, what they're thinking about is those late night commercials saying, it's your money, uh, you know, you want it now, and they're screaming out of the window. Uh, but nasta has got a, a whole a whole public policy uh, to, to, to deal with here on the issue of what is a structured settlement and how do you communicate that to the public. Uh, tell us about that. You know, Larry, one of the most frustrating things is when you, you deal with um, an issue like ours and you have a, uh, some people call the secondary market, um, the factoring companies. There's nothing secondary about it. It's, it's a, it takes full advantage of, of people when they're at their most vulnerable literally pennies on the dollar, uh, take away their, their economic security for life. Uh, we have worked as an organization, uh, Jim Early's leadership on this has been just nothing short of spectacular. We took the six worst states, and by that I mean states that are uh, just not very well regulated when it comes to managing these factoring transactions at the state level with state court judges, and we completely rewrote those laws. Uh, to the fact that uh, some of those states today are probably the very toughest states in the country uh, to conduct a factoring transaction. So we're reclaiming our brand right there at the state legislative level, right with those state court judges. But we built on that and we've worked with major consumer groups like the National Consumers League, the major disability groups like the American Association of People with Disabilities. Most recently, the National Association of Attorneys General. We're working every day to make certain that members of the judiciary, the legal field, the insurance industry, disability groups, consumers, and certainly members of Congress know full well what a structured settlement is and why it's so important. The one issue that's dominated uh, uh, the, really the, the conversation since the election is this concept of a comprehensive federal tax reform that seems to be on its way. Uh, and of course, anytime that's mentioned, it's always set, it always sets off some alarm bells. Now, once again, you're going to have to mount a serious campaign to, to really protect the structured settlement provisions as Congress really intended them. Uh, and, and now they're going to, as, as the federal tax code gets tinkered with, uh, what is NASA's, what are NASA's concerns and, and what are you going to be doing about it? You know, there's nothing that's more um, exhilarating than like a roller coaster ride, especially one that you've never been on before. And that's what we're going to do this year. We've, we've never been on a tax reform roller coaster ride like we're about to be on this year, 115th Congress. Comprehensive, every single issue on the table, full bore tax reform. 
This hasn't happened since 1986. So what does that mean for us as an industry and every single uh, Ringler member across the country? Uh, it means just this, all hands on deck, because the Congress is not going to eliminate structured settlements because we or you have failed. They, they're not going to get rid of the tax code provisions because they no longer work. They, got, they could get rid of the tax code provisions because they're just not aware that Section 130 and Section 104A2 are actually tied together. What if they simply drop it on the, on the cutting room floor and there's no one in that conference room that stops, looks, listens, and put it back in the code? So that's our fear. And so the challenge is we've got to meet with members of Congress uh, here on Capitol Hill, in their offices in the district. I'm up there every single day meeting new members of Congress, new staffers, just to make sure they're aware of just how important and how successful structured settlements have been over the year. And Larry, I've, I've told the board of directors this, and Jim knows this very well. We have really good, strong support in Congress and in this new administration for what we do. That's actually a curse because we do it so well, and your work you do is done so well, you're not controversial, you're not being discussed, you're not being debated, and therefore we're not getting the kind of attention we need to make sure nobody inadvertently drops right. Section 130 from the tax code. You know what, and that's uh, that's easy to do, in a, especially in a very contentious environment. So, yeah, we, we commend whatever NAST is doing to, to really get that message out to all of our legislators as to how important structures are to, to the country. And really, certainly, I think uh, the help of the uh, disabled community is going to be very important in that as well. What else? Is there anything else that's c- coming up on the agenda that you're seeing that you have on your uh, radar screen that you're watching as we move into this new uh, legislative year? Larry, there's a, an issue that is coming up that has been discussed uh, for the last seven Congresses. That would be 14 years, and it's tort reform. Uh, we're going to see efforts uh, at addressing uh, tort reform agenda issues. Uh, it's not going to happen quickly, but we believe it's going to be part of the debate. Certainly medical malpractice reform is something that's been talked about uh, over the years. Uh, you can look at a range of issues that, that we've, we've built up a knowledge base, for example, on uh, CMS and Medicare set-asides for workers' compensation uh, claims. The CMS has been moving in the agenda uh, toward accomplishing uh, MSAs for liability cases. So we'll be watching that very closely. Will CMS continue with that or will they back off that? So there are a range of issues you need to be aware of. And ironically, almost all of these issues end up in the same committee, the House Ways and Means Tax Committee. So we've got to be careful that health care, Medicare uh, issues, uh, tort reform issues and tax issues are all in that same uh, bundle of activity in those same members of Congress. So it's a critical, critical agenda that we make sure a structured settlement's views and industry issues and objectives are well understood and, and acted upon by those key members of Congress. No question about it. And I have a funny feeling that there are a lot of discussions going on in other organizations dealing with other issues, not just structured settlements, that are all uh, sitting around wondering how the new administration and how the new the new approach to all of these issues is going to be affecting them. So it's a very exciting time and uh, in some ways, uh, you know, a little, little bit of a warning out there for all of us. So with that, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back in a minute right here on Ringler Radio with Jim Early and Eric Vaughn. We'll be right back. When it's your interest at stake in a lawsuit settlement, you want only the best, most objective financial plan. You can count on Ringler Advisors to create a customized plan that meets the financial needs of you and your family for the future. Visit RinglerAssociates.com to learn more. There's a Ringler consultant in all the major cities of the U.S. No one has more experienced experts in the settlement business than Ringler. Check out our website at www.RinglerAssociates.com for the best information for injured parties, attorneys, and claims professionals to find the Ringler Advisor nearest you. Welcome back to Ringler Radio. Glad you could join us. 
I'm joined here by Jim Early, the new incoming president of the National Structured Settlement Trade Association, and its executive director, Eric Vaughn. Well, Jim, NASTA has always been a strong supporter of the American Association of People with Disabilities, the AAPD, and the National Consumer League. Talk to us how important that is, those associations are, and how do you as NASTA president coming coming to office want to strengthen those relationships? And Eric, why don't you uh, jump in too in this discussion and talk about what the AAPD's role may be in this new paradigm of, uh, of, of the administration we're going to be facing? Yeah, let, let me just kick it off by saying, you know, years ago, NASTA decided that we were going to build relationships and alliances that linked us to the disabled community and the, and the and injured victim community. And it's part of our DNA. Uh, I cannot think of any other way to explain how we feel about our ties to that community. And, uh, and our support for that, you know, is, a, uh, uh, is, is pretty strong. Uh, uh, NASTA, particip- uh, NASTA companies are participating in the AAPD annual gala uh, in Washington in uh, March. A number of the companies have made significant sponsorships. Uh, at Ringler, we have a year in our hole-in-one co- uh, contest. All of the proceeds go to uh, AAPD, and we match it. And this year we made more inroads with the National Consumer League. Eric and I were uh, honored to attend a, uh, an event in Washington, D.C., that honored the uh, Illinois Attorney General uh, Lisa Madigan. And we've made some inroads with, uh, with the Attorneys General, on uh, structured settlement protection. So, you know, I, I, again, those are those are key key relationships for us going forward. Eric, what what do you think about AAPD's uh, role in the uh, in the new way that some of these issues are going to be addressed in tax reform and other areas in in, in Washington? Well, Larry, there's there's probably no organization uh, that I've ever worked with that I think uh, does more. Uh, and does more well as far as the advance of, of issues important to people with disabilities as the AAPD, the American Association of People with Disabilities. Uh, it's the largest cross-disability uh, organization in America. Uh, I've been on the board of directors. In fact, I'm currently uh, the vice chairman of the board of directors of the AAPD, thanks to the leadership of the structured settlements industry and being so active. And that our involvement with the AAPD has just been, if you will, rewarded uh, by the, 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 the authoring of a new policy paper authored by the Structured Settlements Association and the AAPD, which is essentially a five-page uh, policy statement expressing strong support and enthusiastic interest in maintaining the Structured Settlement Tax Code provisions. It's been delivered to every office on Capitol Hill, and the AAPD president uh, is, is lobbying Capitol Hill with me. This is the only tax policy issue this organization has ever endorsed, and they're lobbying for us on Capitol Hill. And Larry, I can't tell you how important this is because there are so many issues on, on tax reform that involve a financial services product, a bank, an insurance industry, an institution. Our structured settlement tax code provisions represent the interests, the values, the security of people with disabilities. And when that organization stands up or rolls in, as the case may be, in supporting our issues, the impact is powerful. Now, Jim, it's interesting. Uh, Ringler's immediate past chairman, Ross Duncan, who we all know very well, he's he said that having your voice leading NASTA is an extremely strong choice based on your experience, but combining that with your compassion and advocacy for the people who need structured settlements, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Tell me, tell us about your advocacy for the injured. Uh, maybe there's a, a specific story that inspired you along the way, but you've been a, a stalwart in, in advocating for a victim's rights. Yeah, it is, there's so many stories, Larry, after all these years, but I, I think the first one that comes to mind, is, and I won't talk much about it because we've revisited it many, many times, but I think the story of Congressman Jim Langerman, Democrat from Rhode Island, is a good story. As many people know, the congressman was injured as a young man uh, in an accident, and while I was not involved precisely in the structured settlement of his case, I was one of the people that was involved in handling his claim, and I think he's a great success story when it comes to structured settlements. 
And then I, I, I thought about another case that I dealt in. It was a very high-profile Massachusetts case. That I, I won't say any names because people would know what it was, but uh, a number of children who were involved in, we put them all in college plans, and years later they were asking us to change addresses, giving us emails that, you know, said BC, EDU, Harvard, EDU. So I was pretty happy that some of those 12- and 13-year-olds, we, we took care of getting them an education. But the real story is a young lady down in, uh, she was from Connecticut, and I came to, uh, uh, who moved to Florida after a bad um, spinal cord injury. And her attorney called after they had settled the case. It was a little bit late in the process, but I went down to meet with her to talk about how to structure her settlement. And the first thing I found when I got there was her sitting in a wheelchair out in the parking lot of her apartment because the elevator wasn't working. Mm. And, and so I talked with her a little bit and I realized there was not more, this was going to be a lot more than just putting together a monthly payment plan for this young lady. So we, you know, I, I I literally gathered up some of the neighbors and we got her up into her apartment by carrying a wheelchair up a flight of stairs and got talking to her and I realized the first thing we had to do was get her out of there. Uh-huh. So, you know, I set her up with a, an attorney who did a special needs trust and they put her in a home. They got her a van. We programmed payments that would allow her to pay her van and, and up and take care of her, her uh, uh, you know, the, the her regular expenses and uh, you know, a couple of years later, I got a call just telling me how happy she was that she was working and uh, loved her home and loved her ability to get back and forth to work. And I could go on and on about that story because it's yeah. probably the one I'm most proud of. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it also raises another issue that all of us in this structured settlement world, and I'm sure I could. I, it also speaks for uh, attorneys who represent claimants and, and insurance folks who, uh, who help settle those claims, is that... When you see individuals that are in wheelchairs and with spinal cord injuries and, and have those kind of disabilities, you really, really become uh, become appreciative of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which has enabled uh, people in those conditions to have access to uh, to all the things in the past that they never had access to. And you realize how important that was uh, in, in moving this society forward. So we, we thank everyone that was involved in that. And uh, Eric, I know the people in Washington had uh, a lot of debate about that that act, but it, uh, we all can see how important it was for society. Yeah, I think the future of structured settlements is going to be uh, continue more on the along the lines of comprehensive settlement planning, where structured settlements are part of an overall process that is designed to protect somebody's certainty and financial security going forward. Uh, what form that will take. Um, Again, wish I had my crystal ball, but I, I think that we're evolving into something bigger and more important, uh, all of it focused on the certainty and security for injury victims. Eric, what are your final words? As Jim pointed out, we're settlement planners. We're thinking about the challenges that not just we face as professionals, but that our, our customers, the annuitants, the injured people, and the lawyers that we work with, that they face. So we're becoming a smarter uh, more aggressive and more creative and much, much better educated uh, profession. Uh, and that by all by itself is incredibly exciting for us as a trade association and our industry as a whole. Well, with that, very good, very well said. With that, I think we're going to close right now. I, I appreciated both of your uh, comments and the insights. Jim, if someone wanted to talk to you or get in touch with you, how would they do that? Uh, like every uh, Wrangler consultant, I'm reachable through the Wrangler website, which is www.wranglerassociates.com, or I can be reached. Uh, I, I'm I'm going to just a cell phone now, and uh, my office number is six zero three seven one nine one zero. But uh, I can also be reached uh, mobile six zero three eight zero one seven two zero three, and my Wrangler email is jearly at wranglerassociates.com. That's terrific. And uh, Eric, how about yourself? Someone wants to get a hold of you. Easiest, how would they do it? Uh, yeah, the easiest and best way is uh, my email is e vaughn v a u g h n at nssta dot com. Uh, that's always open, always available. And I I would only do this because I love every Ringler uh, person in the country. My cell phone number is two zero two three zero two zero one nine nine. I'd love to hear from people that have complaints or criticisms 
or a really funny joke like, I love the Dole's pineapple. I'd love to hear from people. <laughs> well, listen, with that, I want to say to all of our uh, listeners, as Jim said, you can reach any Ringler Associate on ringlerassociates.com. And, of course, you can listen to any Ringler Radio show by going to ringlerassociates.com, ringlerradio.com, legaltalknetwork.com, or on iTunes, where you can download straight from iTunes and listen at your leisure. And with that, I want to say uh, to both of you gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I do want to tell you that we're going to uh, look forward to talking again later this year with both of you uh, to kind of get an update on some of the issues we raised as we start the two new administrations that are of such critical uh, importance to America, and that's President Trump and President Early. So uh, we're looking forward to that. (laughs) And uh, with that, I want to say goodbye to everyone. All of you out there, have a great day. And thanks again, Jim and Eric, for all your help. Thanks. Uh, You're welcome, Larry. Thank you. Bye-bye now. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network. Its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Thanks for listening to Ringler Radio. Celebrating more than a decade of podcasting and over 2 million listeners. Think of Ringler, the objective settlement advisors with more than 140 consultants in 60 cities nationwide. Visit ringlerassociates.com today.